let's see. So our instructors for the first lesson are Diana Husan and Rada van Bast. And well, maybe they can take it from here. Yes. Should we do a short intro about us? Because we will not introduce like all the instructors. At yes, the please of the do. So, so just one sentence about me. So I work at the University of Tromso in in the northern Norway. Uh, half of my time I work with code refinery, so teaching resource software engineering. And I'm really looking forward to be here with you in the workshop. And with me is Diana. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Diana Yushan. I am uh, working at uh, Uppsala University, which is uh, in Uppsala, a bit uh, north of uh, Stockholm in Sweden. And I am uh, um, part time working with Code Refinery, uh, mostly teaching, but also, uh, uh, well, hopefully working more, more with the community in the future. And then um, I'm also working as an application expert for SNEAP. And let's start with Git. I will here take screen. I just need to find the right one. Oh, and this, this one I'll take. And I need to adjust it just slightly. All right. So with Diana, we will go through, we will teach today. We will do the Git uh, version control today and tomorrow. Uh, one challenge that we need to all get used to is to manage all these different links and where to find things. Um, so there is the schedule, which also you got in an email, hopefully from me. It's in the HackMD here. I will visit the schedule. But what we will also do is we will always post here in the HackMD. We will post where, we, where are we right now. So just want to give you an overview here. When you visit the schedule, this is where we are. Introduction to version control part one. And we will be co-teaching this with Diana. So the, the idea is that we have a conversation. So it's not hopefully not a monologue. We have a conversation. It's a bit like watching a sports event and then there are two commentators and we will help each other out and we will ask each other questions. And always the, the one that is not speaking is watching the D. So hopefully that will be nice and entertaining. And I will now go into this lesson. And you can also open it up. You can follow along. Um, here, uh, I will first zoom out a little bit. So on the left side, you have an overview of different episodes. And later, we will zoom in and make it more readable. Just want to give you an overview that of what we plan to do today. Today, we want to motivate to some basics. We will learn how to branch and merge and resolve conflicts. And probably this is what we will manage today. We will be really flexible and adjust. The plan for tomorrow is that tomorrow we talk about how, how we share repositories online. We will do a really fun exercise on inspecting history and talk about reproducibility with the help of Git and then discuss after two days of, well, after two half days of Git, we will discuss how much of that is really necessary. We also have a couple of optional episodes and hopefully we will have time to talk about undoing and recovering. And we will hopefully also have a time to talk about Git staging area. And then, so now I will go into motivation and just that you all know where we are, what we will always do is we will paste where we are into the HackMD and hopefully Maybe somebody has done that already. Here we are. So here you can always find at the bottom of the HackMD, where are we and follow along. And back into the motivation, this is where I was. And I will just take a sip of, sip of my coffee and I hope, I thought it was appropriate to drink it out of a Git mug. That's really cool. Okay, let me just arrange windows on my side so that I can also see the HackMD and but Diana will help me. And our internal plan here is that I will lead the session motivation and basics. Diana will lead the session branching and merging. Then we will switch back to me. We will alternate, we will do breaks. Every hour we, we will do a 10 minute break and hopefully this will go really well. 
So let's motivate, why are we doing this at all? Why version control, why Git? And I will zoom in here. And I'm starting here in the browser, but later I will also take, so there is this terminal on the bottom. And so soon I will also need the terminal, but let's first start in the browser. So our goal is really that when we, after, at the end of today, we are all motivated, we will all leave this session and we will start to use some form of version control. We know that approximately half, to, half the people watching now already use Git and already use version control. Um, half, approximately half the people are not using it. So we will really start with the basics, but we will get everybody on the same page. And as Richard said, everybody will learn something new soon. So bear with us, even if we go through the basics. So what is, what is version control really the essence of it? Uh, to me is three things. It's that we can record snapshots as we program, as we develop code, we record snapshots and we can go back to them, we have them. But we can do two more things. We can also branch, meaning that I can branch out and I can work on two different things in the same project. Or two, diff two people can work on the same project without waiting for each other, thanks to branches. And we will see this today. And the third thing that it can do, it's really good at merging developments from, so person A and person B simultaneous work can be easily combined. You don't have to do it manually. The tool helps you, uh, us with this. And there are many things that we typically like to snapshots, software or scripts, and scripts are software. So, and this is how it all started with Git and GitHub, but we can really track snapshots of a lot more. We can, we can version control, doc, control documents, manuscripts, configuration files, website sources, even data. So many things we can put under version control. And I would like to start with this example. So this is this is an anonymized real example of a friend of mine. These are some archives of some software that they developed. And this is also a form of version control, but it has some problems. So what problems can we anticipate with this kind of version control? You, you maybe recognize that these are dates. So this was, this was written in 2007. Yeah, 2007, 2008, 2009. Oh, uh, Diana, any any idea what 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 problems do you anticipate here? So first of all, it's a lot of duplicating of the uh, actual files that go into different versions, and then I and then I that I think it's okay if you have a lot of space. But the the most important problem I see with this is it's hard to check differences between different versions. So then I mean, for uh, for tracking different uh, well for um, Looking at the differences in different files, you actually have to untar these different files and then uh, look at the different uh, different uh, files. So it's uh, very hard to actually find the bug which you may have introduced sometime in your code. Thanks. And I'm just just a question to Richard. Am I, are we streaming the right thing? Because I'm looking at my other control laptop and there it's the HackMD. The other control view is wrong somehow. All right, good. So we are streaming the yeah. right thing, so I shouldn't mm -hmm. worry. Yeah, okay. the participants yeah. are con uh, confirming that we are streaming the right thing, yeah. so that's good. All right. Thank you I have for having like the HackMD too. Three different computers, laptops, and just checking, good. So I put two more, so very good reason, uh, very good uh, points here. It's difficult to compare. I put two more things here into the solution. If I give this code to a colleague, a collaborator, and they work for a couple of months and then they come back and I want to combine it with my work, this will be really hard. And also if I, what if I discover a, a bug, which will happen sooner or later, and I want to know how long was it around now I need to unpack all these archives and I have to look into those. And this will be much easier to answer with, uh, 
with Git and a better version control that we will see now in a moment. So when, when people motivate version control in Git, uh, the number, number one thing that is mentioned is often that I can roll back, we can undo. If I make a mistake, I can go back. And that's a really good point. For me, it's actually not the most important point, but it is an important point that I can go back if I mess up. I will tell you what this most important point for me is in a moment. I mentioned that we can branch, so I can work on several things in one project. Several people can work on the, on the same project. And this makes collaboration easier. I don't know if you have seen any of these sentences or written them, and I have seen them and I have said them. Here, I will just finish my work, and then you can start with your changes. And can you please send me the latest version? And where is even the latest version? Which version are you using? Which version have the authors used in the paper that I'm trying to reproduce? So we have probably all seen these sentences and they, with Git there is a better way. With version control there is a better way. And this is the most important point for me personally, it's reproducibility. Because now with the version control, I can indicate which version of my code I have used in my paper. And when I find a bug and the moment will happen, I know I can find out when precisely was this bug introduced. Have I published this already? Or do I need to inform collaborators? And without version control, this is really, really difficult to answer. And then we have here Git. So we will use the tool called Git, which is one way of doing version control. There are different ways, there are different tools. The reason why we do why we use Git and the reason why we will use GitHub is that these are the most widely used. It's the most popular. We believe that it's good for you if you know about them, even if you decide to use any of the other tools. It is the most widely used tool. That's why we do it. I would like to just to close the motivation. I would like to go to show you a real life example, because this is where we would like to be at the end of today or at the end of tomorrow. And this real life example will be, I will show that in the web browser and we will get into the web browser. We will in fact soon start in the command line and we will motivate why, but then in the course of tomorrow and for sure on Thursday, we will be working a lot in the web browser. And I want to show you where we want to get to. And I thought it would be fun to look at actually a real Git repository with real snapshots. And here's just an example. I mean, there are millions, but this example is, I think, really interesting. It's a famous example. It's one of the codes that was used in the event horizon telescope imaging that was on the news three years ago. And you can, you can open up and have a look. So there are a couple of things. We will make sense of this during tomorrow and Thursday. So this is a, this is a real Git repository and it's hosted on GitHub. And there are a few things I wanted to show you. First of all, there are these 1,900 commits and these are these snapshots. So here are snapshots of the code and we can compare them now and we can go back to these. So if we mess up, we can go back. And if we publish, we can refer to precisely the version. I also wanted to show you these uh, insights network and don't don't worry if now the point is not to, to know how to navigate there i wanted to show you branches so these different lines of development here with different colors these are different branches and these little dots are the snapshots and we will here learn how to do that how can we branch out and how can we merge chain developments so here one person was working on different features on different branches and down here can I scroll this down? Here are other people who have also copied this project and are doing their own development. And later we will learn how can we all collaborate? How can we combine these developments together? And there is one more thing that I wanted to show. And that is, it's linked here. Well, I have two more things, two more things. One, one thing is with tools like GitHub, GitLab, we can, I can refer to a code portion. Let me open this up. So I can send somebody a link. This is a long link and it's maybe not readable. It doesn't matter. I can send somebody a link 
And if the person opens up the link, it will open up the code and it will highlight here. I wanted to highlight certain lines in the code. And this is so nice for communication. Instead of, instead of writing an email saying, please download the project, please open the file called something, something, please go to the line 66 and they, they will find this. I can send link to the portion. It makes just communication clearer and easier. And one more thing I wanted to show is my favorite topic, reproducibility. We will learn how to annotate with Git. And we will also be able to do that on the web. If you open up this example, this is a Git annotate, which we will see also in the command line. Here we see it on the web. What you see is the screen is there are like two halves of it. On the right, on the right half is some Python code. The point is now not to understand the Python code. It could work with any code and any project. But the really fun thing is that for every line in this in this code in this code, for every line I can go to the left and I can see which commit, which snapshot was the last one that modified it two years ago. So this line was last modified two years ago. And then I can go in and find out what has changed and why was it changed. And this is so useful because when, if I now find somewhere a problem, what if, what if there is a problem in this line, then I can find out precisely when was this change last time. I can find out when was it introduced, five years ago, and try to do this without version control. Yeah, so uh, regarding this, maybe we can mention that uh, Git also offers uh, commands in order to see which uh, lines were last modified. And yes. uh, that uh, may be easier for tracking uh, bugs. And uh, yeah, actually annotation is great uh, or referring uh, to a certain port, uh, port of the, the code is great because then you can specify, well, you can communicate to your collaborators and ask them, oh, why, why have you introduced these particular lines? Or look, I have found a bug here, or maybe you can help me out debug it or anything like that. Exactly. I just want to have a look whether there is anything we should pick up from the HackMD. And thanks so much for keeping the questions coming. So we are watching this and you can really influence the show. So maybe I can just add that. So uh, many maybe are confused about what is Git and what is GitLab or GitHub or other, uh, or other uh, services. So you should understand Git as a package that comes with a certain tools that you can uh, use in order to track the history of your repository. And, uh, and uh, GitHub and GitLab and there are also other services are just um, basically cloud services that allows you to keep your repository in the cloud. It allows you to uh, share your repository with other people. So making collaboration on a certain project possible. Yes, so it's a lot of new things, but it will also become clear as we go along. So there is Git and GitHub. We will now pause the GitHub part for, for a day probably until, until tomorrow, and we will focus on the Git part, which is really the underlying tool. And now I also showed you where we want to, this is where we want to get to, and we will get there. But we will now take a step back, and I will zoom out here, and I will now go to the basics. And the plan is I will do, together with Diana, we will do a little bit more talking, 10 minutes max, and we will then already do our first exercise. So I went to this basics episode and I said that we will take a bit of a step back and we will now um, go to the command line. And I also know that many of you are new to the command line. And why do we start from the command line is because we, we want to give you a really good understanding of what is happening in Git. And later we will, we will learn to use GitHub and there are then graphical user interfaces and other user interfaces. But I think it's still very useful to know what is really happening in Git because it will empower us to be more comfortable even if we later decide to use version control directly out of our editor. So many editors have a nice integrations with Git and GitHub. But that's why we start with the command line soon. We will 
now very soon create our first blank Git repository. We will make some snapshots. We will make some commits and hopefully get an understanding. And later we will add branches to it. So what is it? I, I already explained it's a, it's a tool where we can save snapshots. And in Git, what we will see in a moment is that Git will create a folder called .git. So it can, it can look like a hidden folder because it starts with a dot. So on, on Linux, this, this is understood as a bit of a hidden folder, but all the snapshots will go in there, all the history. Uh, two things I want to point out is that Git doesn't do anything unless I ask it to do. So it's not, it's not like an autosave where I write my code and it automatically saves it every five minutes. It doesn't work like that. Uh, we will have to tell it actively, please commit this and commit this and commit that. And I mentioned already there are multiple interfaces. There are graphical interfaces, web interfaces, but we start with the command line. And we understand that for actually a fifth of you, command line is a new thing, but we will help. And what we will do now, we will record these snapshots and we will do it, we recommend to do it in two steps. Step one will be, if I want to save a snapshot of this particular file, I do it in two steps. We will, I will do git add the file and then git commit. So we stage first and then we commit. And then I can stage some other files and then commit. And the way we like to explain this, and it's not a perfect analogy, but it's actually, it's, it's an okay analogy, is like taking a photo. Git add is, it's like focusing you know, the photography, the staging, and you can focus again and you can focus it again. And then when you are ready to commit, you. I push the push the trigger, it creates the photo and it goes into my into the dot git folder. So we will do that in two steps. Uh, as we go along here through the material, we there is more than we want to really discuss. So this is by design, but there are some questions. Have a look at those. Some things I will skip, but I will skip it by we don't plan to show everything. But there is more in the material than, than we can cover. One thing that you have hopefully, hopefully done is that you have hopefully configured Git. And the two, two important things when configuring Git is to tell it your name and email address. And that will end up in the, in the log. So later we will see where this information is up, well, but Git really insists on having that. The, the second important thing in Git is to configure, to choose the editor that you like. And maybe I can ask here a question on the HackMD. A little poll. What is your editor? And there are different ones. There is Vim and Emacs and VS Code and Nano and Atom. And what else is there? Oh, spider. Nano edit, I think it's something that uh, Windows users use. Nano edit. So please add add the ones that I that I missed. And it's a bit chaos again, but just just for fun to see what 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 editor are people using. If you don't have a text editor yet, then we will recommend you to go for Nano. It's it's perhaps the simplest to get started started with. And the reason why I'm asking this is to show you that there are many editors and people have different preferences. There is not the one, the best text editor. It really depends on your preference. But the reason I insist on this is that you need to tell Git which one it should use. And if you didn't, if you didn't configure it, it will maybe default to Vim. And it's not a disaster because so if if later you see in Git that it opened up an editor that you don't recognize, you need to go back to the configuration and configure it to your editor of choice. 
And we will also help you then in the exercise to do that. So these are the two things we need to do. And now we will, so we are soon ready to start. I want, I will now pull up my terminal here. Hopefully readable, let me know if I should make the font larger. And I now, I now encourage you to also open up your terminal. So on, on Windows, it's Git Bash. On Mac OS and Linux, it's your default terminal. Open it up. Here I created a new folder for myself just for this course. And here we will now start, start writing code. But we will not write code for, for computers. We will write code for humans. So we will build up a cooking recipe that hopefully humans understand because we think it's more fun and easier if we don't have to focus on a programming language. We don't have to focus on Python or R or C++. We can just focus on Git. So we will write a, we will create a project where we together with version control and tomorrow also collaboratively develop a guacamole recipe. And the bonus of this is that you will learn Git, but you will also have a fun, a nice guacamole recipe as a bonus. And so here now I encourage you to type along. We will just prepare this and then then we will send, give you time to, to, to practice something. So I will then also explain to you what, what you should practice. But here, please type with me. And I also realize that my keyboard is really loud. I should not have this mechanical keyboard. So I hope it's not too clickety, but I will now do what, what the material tells me. So I will create this, I will create this folder recipe and I will step into it. And if you are new to the command line, what these commands do is that this creates a folder. And with this one, I step into the folder. The interesting command now is git init. That's the, that's the one that we should remember, git init. And I got what happened here. It git init created a blank git repository. I also got a, a hint here, and I wonder whether you got it too. And what the hint tells me is that now there is a way, depending on your Git version, there is a way to choose what the default branch should be. We haven't explained yet what branches are. We will explain it later. Uh, traditionally, the default branch was called master. In the last years, many tools have decided to rename to not use master and instead use main. And this, this hint tells me how I can achieve that. But for the moment, we can ignore it. So the important thing get in it, I have now created an empty git repository. There is nothing in there. And the second git command that we will learn is git status. And git status is one that I use a lot. If I just want to know what's going on, what is the state of my repository? Where did I left it? Well, here there is nothing yet. There is a branch called master. We need to explain later what it is. There are no commits yet. And also there is nothing to commit because I don't have any files, but it's nice that it gives me some hints here. It gives me the hints of how about you, uh, we create some files and then we use this git add to track them. And as a reminder, git add, with git add, we, we were focusing. And then with git commit, we, we saved the snapshot. OK, so now together, just as a preparation of the exercise. And if you get stuck here anywhere, don't worry, because during the exercise, you will have enough time to, to catch up. So the first exercise will be relatively simple. And as a preparation, we are now asked to create two files with your favorite editor. So now you need to open up your favorite editor. And the goal is to create two files, one file called instructions, where we will have instructions. We have our little code on how to the cooking recipe. And another file is called ingredients.txt. And in there, we will collect some ingredients, two avocados, one lime, two, two teaspoons of salt. And my favorite editor is Vim, but I will not use Vim. I will use Nano also so that I can type slower and 
So in case you don't have an editor, take nano. I will do the same thing. Nano, and then I start with instructions. Nano instructions text. And in there, I will copy paste. Let's see whether this works. Boom, copy paste into the file. How can I save and exit? In nano, it's control X. Save, yes. And then I will do the same thing with ingredients. Copy paste, control X. Yes, save. And get status. What you want to see is this, you have two files but they are untracked. Git doesn't know what to do with them. I will just give you like a minute to catch up. In the main, may I can add that git status is a great command uh, to use especially when you are starting out with git just use it often whenever you edit a file <clears throat> and before you commit I think yeah i use it all the time oh like when i come back to a project after a week and i already forgot how did i leave it did i have modified files did i commit or not the first thing i do is git status what does git status tell me here it tells me that there are two files it doesn't know what to do with them Maybe I want to put them under version control and here give me hints on how to do it. Git add file to include in what will be committed. And I will do exactly that. Git add, I will stage ingredients and I will stage instructions. And then I will run git status again. And now color changed. These files are staged, they are not committed yet but they are about to be committed. And now I can review what am I about to commit. These two files, that looks good. I'm happy about it. So now let's, let's make our first commit of the day. What I will do is I will do git commit minus n. And here comes, in, in there comes commit message. And later we will also discuss how to write good commit log messages. But now I type git commit minus m and then explain what did i do here i'm adding ingredients and instructions enter and git status again and now there is nothing to commit and what does the minus m flag mean oh well, there are many ways to find out one way to find out is i can write git help commit and if I go scroll down here with arrow down, there is a lot of options, a lot of, lot of, lot of options. I don't know most of them, but there is minus M. We just want you to know that this is one way of finding out what, what things mean. What I do most of the time is I, I ask the web, I ask the internet. In this case, it will, or specify the commit message. And how do I get out of this? With Q. Q. So now we are already almost ready with the exercise. Just checking here with Diana. So one one idea we, we could one option is we do first break, then exercise. The other option is we do first exercise, then break. Let me check what we what we thought when we planned this out. What do you think? What does it look here? So I think we uh, thought exercise and then break. Um, we haven't covered that much material yet, so I think it would make sense. Please let us know in the hack and be what yep. you would prefer. But uh, so what we could do is we we would do an exercise. It would be until ten minutes past the hour, and then we will do break. There is a bit of a risk that. Some people will not take the break then. Hmm. 
So okay. exercise leaders, please force people to take breaks. And also, I think if you need more or less time for the exercise, it's very helpful if you write for us in the hack and deep. Yeah. So, like we can so maybe we this. go ahead with the plan. We will do the exercise before the break. So the plan is it will be 15 minute exercise. Um, in the exercise session, those of you who work with, with others in the team, please also say hi to others, introduce yourself. Uh, we have 15 minutes. Your goal in this exercise is to, if you got stuck here, catch up with this guacamole recipe. In this exercise, please add half an onion to ingredients and also add an instruction, for instance, enjoy at the end. But when you do that, when you modify, do not stage the changes yet. First, like after modifying the files, first try how does Git diff look? What does it show you? It will show you what are your modifications. Then after you tried Git diff in the exercise, please try to now commit these separately. First stage ingredients and commit this change. And then stage the instruction change and commit that. And here you can also try what, what happens if I leave out the minus n. Because what will happen is it will open up your editor and hopefully the right one. And then you can type the commit message in the editor. And finally, once you made, so you'll make two new commits, you, you will have three commits. It's not a problem if you have more than three. Please also try these, com uh, these commands. Try git log, try git log stat, try git log one line. Some of you will think that this is way too, too easy. So for those of you who want to do more, uh, please scroll down. There are optional exercises. So you can have a look at these. Uh, optional, so these green boxes here, optional one, optional two, optional three. So there is something for everybody. And yes, so we are now 56, which means that my recommendation is exercises until 11 minutes past the hour, then 10 minutes break, and then we will be back. We will put it to the HackMD uh, when we are back on, on the stream. And please keep the questions coming on, on the HackMD and we will, we will reply. What, did I forget anything important? That no, sounds um, good. And the link is already in the HackMD, so. That's, yeah. uh, that's all good. So maybe one thing we can mention is that we are going to get back um, just before the Git history, right? Yes. They should follow a ring, sorry, uh, until the Git history. Yeah, after the, after the break, we, we will have a quick discussion about this. So this is where we will return after the break. Yes and unmute it and welcome back. And we restart here on, on stream. And I will just check whether I'm sharing the screen. Probably am. Yes. So in the exercise, uh, we were supposed to add a ingredient and one more instruction. And I was just here chatting with Richard and Diana, so I didn't manage to commit yet, but it's a, that's a good because then we can do that together here. I will just show what you did in the exercise session. So I added half an onion to ingredients. I added this enjoy instruction to, to instruction. And what we asked you to do, to, to do first, git diff. And there is this output here, but the interesting part I'm normally looking at the green lines are what was added, the red lines are what was removed. Um, and so I often inspect what are my modifications. I often run status just to double check. And now we asked you to commit them separately in two separate commits. And one commit was git add ingredients. I just want to do it in the same order as you, yes and git commit minus m adding half an onion. That's one commit. The other file is still staged. 
sorry, it's not staged. It's modified, now it's staged. And if I leave out the minus M, what will happen? It will open up an ed editor. Let's see, surprise, what will happen in my case? It opens up the I. And here on top, like all the lines that start with the hash, they will be ignored. They are just for my information. And here on top, I can write a commit message. And what did, what did we write? Adding, no, 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 no. It should be, don't forget to enjoy. And this is where you are. Some of you have looked at the optional exercises. So here it's good to know that there are tools that allow you to compare also side by side visually, and you can use your mouse to scroll up and down. This can be useful for larger changes where it's maybe a little bit hard to see in, in, the, in the terminal. And here you have, you have probably had a chance to look at the Git log. So I have a log of my changes. The, the most recent one is on top. Here I have three commits. Each commit has this unique identifier. And then you have maybe seen that there was this git log stat, which I found useful sometimes because it will also tell me which file has been modified. And you had a look at git log one line, which is useful to get. It will, it will show me only the first line of the commit message. So I get like a compact summary. This we will explain it later. These are still the unique identifiers, but only at the beginning of it. The commit, they are not numbered one, two, three, four, five. They have these really long identifiers. And this is because soon, tomorrow and on Thursday, we will work to, together on a project. And then we will make commits on each of our computers and then we will synchronize our changes. And then we would have a bit of a disagreement of if I count one, two, three and somebody else counts one, two, three, what does that mean? So here we have a unique, unique uh, identifier and this will make it easier for us to collaborate and synchronize changes across computers. So maybe we can also say that these unique identifiers are very useful when we refer to these particular commits. And often it's enough if uh, just part of the hash, so this identifier is given, yeah. eight digits are typically enough. Yes. Uh, and somewhere, is there an optional exercise where we ask people to compare between commits? I thought it was something. Yeah, here. So you can use these now, if you want to have a look at the commit, I just want to have a look at this one. You can do git show, git show and that identifier. And then you will see who did it, when, what did they use as a commit message, and what has changed. And I can also compare. I can compare. I can do git diff. What is the difference between this and this, or this and this? This leads me to discussing commit messages. So when we uh, when we create commit, we always have to give it a message. Uh, here is, and I'm sorry, I should zoom in actually. Commit messages. Here is a good example. Um, commit messages, if they if they need to be longer than one line, convention is to have the first line summarize what is what's going on, second line empty, and then more context. And in the context, it's good to give an explanation of why something was changed, not only what was changed. Because if I want to know what changed, I can just compare. I can do git diff, what has changed between this and this. But often I already forgot why did we change it. So a good commit message explained why something happened. If you ref you can refer in commit messages to discussions that you had somewhere else. And we will also come back to that. So it's good to refer to it. If this was based on a discussion on GitHub, then refer to that discussion. Here are some examples on which are maybe not so ideal. There is also a humorous site which com which collects real commit messages, which are funny but not very useful. I want to recommend you to have a look at these blogs. They discuss 
the usefulness of like how to how to design a good commerce message. What I also find really useful is to for your favorite project. And here are some examples. Many of you know SciPy, NumPy, Pandas, Julia, I don't know, ggplot. For your favorite project that you know, have a look at how do how they do it. For instance, let, let me have a look. How does NumPy do commit messages? You can get inspiration. So this is how they do it. And they it seemed that they prefix if it's a documentation fix, then they prefix it with doc. And they have some other conventions. How does how does the Julia project? How do they do commit messages? Good for inspiration. But also uh, don't get let's not try to make it too perfect at the beginning. So the perfect can be the, the enemy of the good. Um, at the beginning, when they are new to Git, I sometimes do commit messages that are not super nice, but it's good to make the commits. Better too many commits than too few commits. Better too many commits with not great commit messages than way too few with a perfect commit message. So this is just for inspiration, but it should not be a barrier to us. It should not scare us here. Before I move on to, I wanted also to discuss Git ignore. Anything I forgot here? No. So one question that Diana asked me during the during the break. I mean, Diana knows the answer, but uh, it, it's a very good a very good question. And the question is, here we started. We started in a project that had no files and we did a git init and then we added instructions and ingredients and we started from zero but what if we don't start from zero what if i already have a project how should i start then um, you still start with git init but now you have all the files already and the way to start then is that you you can then add all the files and commit them but then the next question is, should we actually add all the files that we have? Are there any files that we should not add to Git? And indeed, there are, there exist files that we it's better not to add them to Git. And then we can list them in a file, in a special file with the name .gitignore, and Git will ignore these files. And what are such files that we should not put to Git? This could be password files or generated files. If you work in a language that compiles code, like C, C++, Fortran, Java, uh, then you don't want to put the, the compiled archives, binaries, libraries to version control. In If you work with Python, you have maybe seen files like this, or you have seen maybe folders like that, PyCache by dot pyc, py, pyc. These files, it's good to ignore them. And it's good to ignore them because they are generated and also to avoid confusion because the generated files can be different on different operating systems, on different compilers, on different computers. And then it could be really confusing if just me running my project suddenly updates all these files and they look modified and I don't know why they look modified. So there are a couple of files that we want to then tell Git not to track, and we put them into .git ignore. So these are some file, some examples. You can use wildcards. Uh, those of you who write LaTeX documents and manuscripts, you probably want to ignore the .pdf. Actually, everything except .tech and .dot and the bibliography because everything else is generated. Any other examples that people know and are ignoring? So good to know about that this exists. But again, if I start with Git, uh, it's it's good to it's it's all right to commit too much rather than too little. What did I forget here? Hopefully nothing. So we we learned about how to initialize staging committing. 
commit message, most important thing is why and give context. And that the first line is the most important one because the first line is the one that I see when I browse here git log one line. It will also be the first line that I see when I browse a git repository in GitHub because it shows the first line here. And then if I want to know more, then I can click and then I see more. So there are more context. It's the first line that counts. And then I also mentioned that we start here in the command line just to get a good understanding. But there is more. There is There are graphic user interfaces. There is GitHub desktop. Uh, there are other graphic user interfaces. And also tomorrow and on Thursday, we will work more and more here on the browser. I would like to, before handing off over to Diana, I would like to summarize what we have seen. We recall snapshots in these two steps. It might seem a bit cumbersome. In fact, you can do it in one step. But we will hopefully tomorrow have time to motivate why we recommend to do it in two steps. And the short answer is that it allows me to inspect my commit before really saving it. And a couple of commands we have seen, a couple of commands we have not seen, but just want to mention them. So git init creates a new repository. With add, I populate it with files. Git commit, git status to see what's going on. Git log shows me the log of my changes. With git diff, I can compare different versions. With git show, I can have a look at particular versions. Two commands we have not seen is you can actually move, rename files and remove files. But when I remove a file that has been tracked by Git, I don't remove it from the history. I can still, still find it. And a reminder, where is, it, where is the history? Now I do ls minus la just to see also the hidden folder. All the commits, all the history is in here in .git. So if I now remove a file, I can still find it in the history. And then you can we can test our understanding. Oof, sorry. Just wanted to make it a little bit smaller. And should we put that on? Should we do the little test on HackMD just for fun? Yes, test that's your understanding. Good. Let's scroll down here. Ooh, jumping a lot. So what is the question? The question was, which commands below would save the changes to an existing local Git repository? One, two, three, or four. One, two, so we can vote. Of course, you can also cheat and open the solution. So which one will do it? Uh, git commit minus M, or first init, and then this or first add, then commit, or do, or do this. OK, not too many votes, but some votes coming in for option number three. And then if you have a look at the solution, you will also see which one it is and what was the problem with the, other, uh, with the other solutions. It's It takes really just this one line to create a new repository. So for your existing projects, if they are not on the Git yet, hopefully I motivated you to go in, type Git in it, Git add all the files. And if you want to add all the files and you don't want to list them one by one and you have 200 files, you can do git add dot and it will add all of them. And let's start using Git. And I'm, I will give the screen to Diana who will now take us through branching merging. But I will be there as well, and I will ask the also questions. It sounds great. So if you unshare, then I can now. Right, unsharing.
Okay. Is the is the screen fine now? Yes. So I will. Uh, so we are going to continue now with the branching and uh, merging. And you may find this lesson, this episode, just uh, just after the basics uh, commands that we just uh, went through. And I will zoom this uh, a bit more. Uh, so um, branching is actually uh, the killer feature uh, of uh, Git. How uh, the way uh, it's uh, thought of by by many developers. And uh, why that is the case is because it's an amazing tool to uh, to test different ideas, to test different features of our code. Uh, but uh, doing this in a very light way. So whenever we create a new branch, we don't have to copy our entire repository. We are just going to uh, to track uh, the the new changes. And um, and why do we want uh, to use uh, branches? I mean, as I said, mostly it's because we want to try a new idea. And maybe this idea is good. Maybe it is bad. But it, if we are unsure about um, about uh, it's a success and it's always a very good idea to, uh, to uh, create a branch before doing that. So um, in the previous um, episode, what we did is just uh, to, uh, to track a, uh, a guacamole recipe. So uh, I am here in this directory, um, the recipe directory, which I have initialized as you have done as a Git repository. So now Git is going to track all the changes that I have done. So, up to now, what we had is uh, three commits. Maybe you have a few more, that is fine. So the way to see them is by using this uh, git blog command, uh, which is going to show the history, so all the commits that we have done up to now. So uh, typing git blog without uh, any arguments is going to list all commits. And then as uh, Radovan was, uh, already mentioned, it's the hash of the particular commit, but also two references, which I think it's very important we define right now. So the references um, is, uh, so the head, and the head by default points to the very uh, latest commit. But we also have an additional reference here, which is master. So this is the branch that we are on, is the master branch, or it may be the main branch. It may be called the main branch if you are working on uh, Windows or you can use a different name for your branch. Yeah. Um, but uh, in my case, it's master and maybe for some it is main. And uh, the master branch, uh, so when we refer to the branch, we actually refer by default to the tip of the branch. So as we have committed um, our modifications to the working directory, we have moved the head from version one and then to version three, and then to version three, or well, to commit one, commit two, and commit three. And along with the head, we also move the tip of the branch, the master branch. So uh, I will just redo git blog by specifying a, 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 um, uh, the one uh, line option, just so that I can uh, have these um, um, commits uh, in a more readable way. So the same as before, we had these three commits and then uh, the references to the head and the master um, for the very latest commit. Also, Diana, if you can increase font size in the terminal. Thanks. Is this uh, good enough or maybe we, yes? I think it's better, thanks. Okay then. So um, um, although, I mean, uh, branch uh, as a reference is always the tip of the particular branch. When we talk about branches in general, we actually mean all the parent commits and not only the latest one. So we refer to branch of all this, this uh, uh, time evolution of, uh, of um, our uh, commits. And um, when do we want uh, to deviate from this linearity of, uh, of the branches? So when do we want to introduce uh, new branches? So uh, this, uh, this is particularly good if you want to work on new features. And uh, on a, it may be a feature that uh, we are positive about, uh, um, but, uh, but uh, we still like to have it in a branch so that in case we make any mistakes, then we can just, uh, just 
we can continue having a good uh, working uh, um, version of our main one. And um, and uh, and uh, the nice thing about uh, Git and version control is that it allows us to isolate isolate these different uh, different uh, um, tracks of work, these different uh, development lines. So in this example here, which is more realistic uh, uh, to how a uh, Git repository looks like, so we have a main branch, the green one, and then uh, at some point in time, so after the second commit. Then we had uh, uh, started uh, working in on a new feature. Let's call it feature B, and then uh, we can work, for example, on this uh, in parallel to uh, to uh, working, for example, on um, on the main uh, branch. And uh, I mean, of course, this uh, uh, graph can be as complicated as uh, or as uh, simple as uh, you wish it to be. I think it's uh, good to uh, mention that. Um, it is important to merge uh, branches uh, rather often, and we are going to show how to do that. The reason being is because you still want to be uh, up to date with uh, with your main uh, um, with your main uh, branch, and it's also very important when you are collaborating with uh, other persons. So um, uh, we are going to use an alias. Um, in the following, and uh, the reason being because it's um, it's uh, easier instead of typing a long command. So, for example, if I want um, uh, to uh, to show the history of um, uh, all the commits and all the branches, then I uh, can uh, add uh, um, the all option for all branches. I can add the option graph, which is going to um, um to um, um make uh, the uh, output of git log uh, look actually nicer especially when working with several branches uh, i'm going to use decorate which just means that uh, it's going to uh, keep the hashtag um shorter and then uh, the option that we used before the one line one which is just going to uh, uh, show one line for each commit. But instead of typing this uh, all long command, what I can do is to uh, define an alias, which I can call graph uh, by uh, using this command here. So I will just do a copy paste. And then instead of uh, uh, typing this command, all that I need to do is type git graph. And we ask now also everybody to do it because we it will be really useful shortcut later. Yes. Right now, it looks a little bit underwhelming because we only have three commits and we only have one branch. So it looks the same. It looks like nothing really happened. But, yes. but later, as we will get more commits and more branches, it will be a really useful alias. So we encourage everybody to define it. Um, we also have somewhere in the material, we don't have to go there now, we have an episode on aliases and shortcuts where you can learn more about how to define them, how to undefine them, what other shortcuts we use sometimes. Okay, so um, so then again, I mean, uh, we have three commits, the latest one uh, uh, pointed to head and the tip of the master branch. And uh, one thing I should mention um, before, um, Going further is that the uh, M2 commit is actually a so-called branching point. When uh, we have a split, uh, the the main branch into two branches, the the master one or and uh, and an additional one, and the uh, X2 commit um, in this example here is um, what did I say before? So M2 is a uh, branching uh, point, and then X2 is a merging point. Uh, which uh, basically uh, um, unifies it, unifies the changes between the uh, B3, the branch uh, B and uh, and the main branch uh, here, the M branch. Okay, so uh, in order to see on which uh, branch we are, I'm going to go back to my terminal. We just need to type git branch. And uh, in this case, it's going to list uh, the master branch only uh, because this is the only branch that we have uh, up to now. The star here means that the head actually points to the tip of this uh, master branch. So um, 
That's why we have a star there. So how do we create a, a, a new branch? Also, I should say that at this point, it's good if you uh, if you follow along. So um, I can do that using uh, the um, git branch uh, experiment and then master. So git branch and then the name of the branch that I want to create. So let's call it experiment. And then uh, the branch from which I want uh, to uh, create. And then in my case, it is uh, master. So uh, if I do now git branch again, I see that uh, uh, besides the master branch that we had previously, I also have a new branch, which is called experiment. The, um, um, the star, so the head still points to the uh, master branch. And if I want to, um, um, uh, to uh, go to the experiment branch, then I need to use the git checkout command. So this git uh, checkout and then the branch name. And this will take me to the tip of that particular branch. So can I ask you if I now, if I would now do new commits, where would they end up? So uh, to answer that, one should always do uh, uh, git um, branch. And then one can see that uh, in this particular case, I am on the experiment branch. And all new commits are just going to be uh, um, uh, on top of this particular commit here. So if I do git um, uh, log one line again, or let's say git log nine. So the, my newest uh, commit, well, the new commit is going to be uh, uh, on top of the uh, on of this particular commit here. Yes, so on the experiment to... branch. Exactly. So you can you can look at git branch, which doesn't create a new branch. It just shows me which do exist. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, on git log, you I can see that the head is pointing to experiment. So that's this recorder head. Yes. And on, so, on HackMD, I put this analogy of a tape recorder. And yet another way is to do git status. You can also type git status, and it will also tell you on which branch you are. Yes, I will show that. So git. I continue. Git status does tell us that it's on that we are on the uh, uh, experiment branch, and up to now, I mean, our working tree is clean. Um, yes. So we also know on which branch we are by looking at the star here. So. Uh, this means that the head is on this particular branch. So uh, let's move forward. Um, so uh, we are going to do now uh, an experiment of adding cilantro to our um, guacamole recipe. And that for that, I'm going to add the ingredients files. We'll use the I, but you can use your preferred um, editor. And, um, and I am going to say that, okay, we add two tablespoons of cilantro. And please add it on top of the file for a certain reason. Yes, which will yeah. become uh, obvious a bit later on. And um, if I do git status again, then I see that now I have modifications in my uh, ingredients uh, file. And these modifications are not staged yet. So they are shown uh, in uh, Red in my terminal. In order to stage them, we use the git add command but, uh, with the ingredients uh, file as argument. And uh, we see that now we have these uh, stage modifications of the ingredient uh, file. And I'm going to commit this. So git commit dash n with the message that was try some cilantro. Yeah, and please follow along. But again, there will be later an exercise session where you can catch up. Uh, and uh, make sure that you are on the experiment branch. So um, uh, let's check again. So git uh, git. Um, so now you branch. can use the git graph. Or... Yes. Um, so with git branch, I can see that I'm still on the experiment branch. And in order to see all the commits that I have uh, done up to now, I can uh, do git graph, or I can just uh, type uh, git log uh, uh, all one line. So 
So that's another way. And what so, you can see here is that nothing happened to master. Master is where it used to be. We created this new commit and only experiment branch changed. Yes, and um, let's uh, say that uh, maybe two tablespoons of cilantro is not uh, is too much. So uh, we can uh, tweak this by uh, editing the ingredients file. Again, I am going to uh, um, stage these uh, changes and I'm going to uh, commit uh, um, with the message, let's try to keep it uh, consistent, maybe a little bit less uh, cilantro. And here what Diana did is two commits in one line separated by semicolon. So it's, it, it is like typing first get at the ingredients and then the second command. Yes. So if I uh, um, look at the history again with our git graph alias, then I see that I have two new commits in uh, the experiment branch. In other words, the experiment branch is, uh, is well, two commits ahead of the master one. So, um, um in uh, in the uh, um exercise in the new uh, in uh, in the follow up uh, exercise what i would uh, like you to do is to uh, create um, a new branch uh, let's call it the less uh, salt branch from the master one so what you will need to do first is to uh, change to the master branch uh, and then, uh, and then uh, create the, the last, uh, sorry, the less uh, sold uh, branch. And then in this branch, uh, I would like you to reduce the amount of salt, uh, stage uh, these changes, and then uh, commit, uh, commit it. And uh, what you are going to uh, um, end up with is uh, three different uh, uh, branches. And um, Um, yeah, and then we are going to uh, see how to merge them together. So if you stop at the uh, merging branches, that uh, that would be uh, perfect. And can we go back because there was one thing left out if, if you scroll up to the exercise, just to clarify. So the goal is you create a branch called less salt, make sure that you create it from master and not from experiment, reduce the salt. But then if you scroll down a little bit, you should also you should also you should also make a change on master. So later you should go back to master and mod create a readme file. Yes. And if you scroll down just a slightly little bit more, what you want to end up with, if we look at the graph, just a little bit more, the boxes, you want to end up with something that looks like this. So then if you, in your terminal, you do git graph, it should look a bit like this. So in experiment, we have two commits. In one, we added cilantro, then we changed our mind, we reduced it. In less salt, we reduced the salt. On the master branch, we added a new file. And that's your goal in the exercise session. Also, should we point out that there are, again, optional exercises. So for those who want to do more, you can do more. So on this page, if you scroll down these green boxes, there are additional exercises that you can do in, in that exercise. Yes. Session. So if you already know how to merge branches, then you can continue with uh, with the optional uh, exercises. Otherwise, uh, uh, you should um, um, wait until uh, until we show you that. So um, the optional exercises, let's, sorry, I think I scrolled too much. So, uh, comes after deleting branches here. So you can um, uh, you can uh, um, commit uh, some, uh, what, uh, send some new commits to the master branch and then, uh, sorry, to a newly created branch and then uh, do a fast forward uh, merge of this uh, branch back to the uh, master one. And it, it was a little bit fast for some, the creating of this experiment branch and doing the cilantro additional removal. But you can catch up with this during the exercise session. 
So there's hopefully enough time to create also the experiment branch, the list salt branch, and modify the master branch. And I can uh, show again how to uh, get uh, back to the master branch. So the command for that is git checkout, and then the name uh, of the branch. So in my case, master, and then uh, I get the um, output that I have now switched uh, to branch and master. And to double check that, I can uh, type the git branch command. And uh, now I am on the master branch as uh, as the star to the head uh, um, points to. And um, I can also do a uh, git log and I see all the commits for this uh, particular branch, the master one. So um, let's uh, take, I think, uh, something like uh, 15 minutes for uh, the exercise in the breakout room. And then, um, Yes, so those of you who have access to a team, join your team. Those who are on your own, please follow, try to do it on your own. We will, have, uh, we will now allocate 15 minutes for the exercise. And what is our strategy then for after the 15 minutes? Are we doing a break after, right after? My recommendation yes, we are is doing yes. the... Yeah. So... So until 15 past exercise and then break until 25 past. So we would restart here on stream 25 past the hour. Did I get it right? Yes. OK. Super. So good luck. Yeah. Um, remember, continue asking your questions. And we also have this little poll here for your status. OK. Thanks. Bye. So we are live now, right, Richard? Yes, we're back. Hello. OK, then great. So uh, I hope you uh, got the chance to do the exercise. I'm going to uh, um, catch up uh, with uh, the repository as well by following the steps. So um, the first thing that uh, you had to do is to create a new branch from the less sold one. So I will uh, check on which branch I am using the git branch command. This is a never ending typo, git branch. So I am on the master branch. Now I'm going to uh, create the, the branch called less salt from the master one. So git branch and then the argument less salt. And the master is here optional. If I do not uh, specify the argument, then the default is the, mar the branch that I am on. Uh, and uh, git branch again will show me that I have created less salt, but I am not on that branch uh, yet. So to do that, I will check out to it using git checkout. And the reference for the branch, which is its name, so less salt. And uh, what uh, you have uh, uh, done here is to reduce the amount of salt. So I will open the ingredients here and reduce it to uh, one tablespoon. I will stage and commit the first stage, the change, and then commit. And uh, I am going to say, let's see, reduce the amount of salt. Going to use git graph again to, in, uh, to inspect my history. So I see that I have uh, a new commit uh, the, that head is pointing to, and that is, uh, and the, the commit message reduced the amount of salt. Um, okay. So this is what uh, what we have created now. So we had the initial branch, the master one, the experiment one with uh, two commits where we had, uh, well, we introduced the cilantro and adjusted for that. And now we have the newly created branch, the less salt one, pointing to this commit L1. We refer to it as L1, but it's uh, basically the, this commit that the head points to. So uh, I will do the second part of the exercise, switching to master, git branch, 
master. Uh, sorry, checkout master. And just as a clarification, because Git branch master will try to create a new branch with the name master, and yes. Git checkout switches between branches. So now I have, I have switched to the master branch, and I am going to add the readme file. NB. So it's going to be in markdown um, format, and I'm going to copy paste from here. So faster for um, faster commit, and uh, I will uh, stage this modification. Readme actually creation as well, uh, and then uh, git commit version with the message added with me. So if I uh, um, inspect the history again with git graph, then uh, I see that uh, I'm still well, I am on the master branch now, and I have uh, two other branches, the less sort and experiment one. So um, let's assume that we are actually happy with our two experiments and we want to, uh, to branch, uh, to merge these, uh, these two uh, branches. Can I and, for a moment? So, yeah. um, is it easy for you to share the HackMD in view mode? Because we also ask participants, we just want to know how it is going, like the overall speed. Is that easy for you to share? It is easy for me. So uh, here so is on, the hack and the bottom there. Yes. So um, uh, if you could uh, give us some feedback on how uh, the exercise was, was it too fast, too slow, or maybe too easy? Well, not just the exercise. Uh, I would say also the general speed here. Uh, is it too basic, too advanced? Let us know. Thanks. Okay, so uh, what we will do in the following is to uh, merge uh, these two branches that uh, that we have uh, created. So I will double check again that well, I am on the master branch and how do I know that? Because I just um, uh, type git graph and the head points to the master branch. So then I know that I am on this uh, branch. Otherwise, alternatively, I can do git status. Uh, which will tell me that I am on the master branch and the working clean, uh, tree is clean and, uh, and uh, the nothing is uh, staged yet. In order to um, uh, merge the experiment branch onto master, we need to uh, use the git merge command. And the arguments uh, uh, we should use is the branch we want to merge, uh, in this case, the experiment one. And uh, and I can add that the, the git merge will always modify, it will only always modify my current branch. And uh, as a second argument, uh, the um, branch that we want to merge into. Oh, not into. No, we, we always modify oh, we don't, uh, oh, the yes, current branch. Yes. So we, we, if we type git merge experiment, we merge the experiment branch into our current branch. Right, or did I miss something? And then I have a, a um, um, I am prompted with a commit message for this merge. And the reason is because uh, when we use the git merge command, then we are actually going to create a new commit, which is going to incorporate the changes that uh, we had at the tip of these uh, two branches, the master branch and the experiment branch. So I am happy with, uh, with this uh, commit message. And um, um, if I type git graph, then I see that uh, my latest commit is a um, actually a, uh, a merging point of two uh, branches, the experiment one and the uh, master one. And uh, we are going to do the same with, uh, with the, the second uh, branch, the less um, uh, sort one. So uh, git merge does sort. We'll just double check that 
Yes, we want to merge these at this point. Yes, git merge less sort. And uh, again, we're prompting with a message. Then I'm going to save that. So um, git graph again will uh, show me that uh, I am now also merged uh, the, um, the less sort branch into our main uh, uh, branch, the master one. So how can I see uh, which uh, branches uh, I have merged already? I uh, can type git branch slash slash merged. And this will list all the branches which have been merged into the master one. And it's really nice that git combined these developments and we didn't have to do it manually. Yes, so uh, um, in these examples here, there was actually no conflict between uh, the changes uh, that we have introduced in the less uh, uh, salt uh, uh, ranges and this, the experiment one with compared to the master one. But the other one is going to show actually in the following how we deal with, uh, with conflicts when we merge branches. So what happens if we change the same part of our code uh, uh, in uh, in both branches. So um, we can now uh, delete the branches if uh, if uh, we want, and uh, the way uh, we do that is git branch dash d, and then uh, the name of the branch, and uh, uh, git branch accepts several arguments. So I'm going, I can delete both the less uh, sold and the experiment branch. Otherwise I can just uh, delete uh, um, one at a time. And so, if, I delete, uh, so if I delete these branches, what, what am I really deleting? Am I also deleting the commits? So when you delete this, uh, the only thing that is uh, deleted is the reference to the branch. The commits are still there. So if I do git, um graph i can see that the commits are still there but the reference is gone so if i scroll up a little bit then you see that before i had this reference to the tip of the band the less salt and the experiment one by deleting the branch i remove this reference but the commits are still there and there is actually um well, there are ways to redefine these references if you wish. But in this case, we we were happy with the changes. We can safely delete the branch, but we can, of course, refer to these uh, older commits uh, if uh, we want to. Now, um, uh, we use the dash D option when we have uh, we, when we want to delete a branch that has uh, been already merged. If the branch is not merged, then we should add the, the dash capital D command, which is going to force the removal of a, of a branch, even if it is uh, not merged. And uh, this is like, uh, it's good to, I would say it's good to use the dash small d option, because it's like a safety net be, um, um, before um, um, deleting a branch, which is not uh, merged. So always use the dash uh, small d option, unless you want, unless you know for sure that you want to delete the uh, um this um unmerged branch and then also in this case i mean deleting the branch means actually deleting the the reference to the branch the commits are still there and one may refer to them as long as you have the the hash um, um ids so the commit id numbers we are no, going to know. skip sorry, uh, sorry? Yeah, i just want to add that i don't know whether it's helpful or not but uh... What I like to think of branches as like a sticky note, like these paper sticky notes that we can stick on something. That's how I imagine a branch. You can it, it's a sticky note that sticks on a certain commit. And if I if I delete a branch, I delete the sticky note, but the commit is still there. And uh, if you want to know uh, how you can do, for example, a fast forward merge with branches, you can look at this uh, optional exercise. We are not going to go through uh, this one here, but if you have questions, please ask them in the hack and the, and then we are going to uh, uh, show that. 
uh, and then we can answer to that, sorry. Uh, there are some other ways of uh, merging branches. Uh, one of them is rebasing. Again, this is optional, but uh, you may have a look at that. One, uh, one important thing uh, is uh, tags. So um, uh, it may be a bit um, confusing to uh, use the, the hash as the, um, the only identifier of a certain commit. Let's say that we have uh, we have um, um, we are happy with uh, with a particular version of uh, of the code, and we want to uh, to make a uh, an official release out of it. Then uh, it is uh, helpful if we can add a tag to a particular version. And the way uh, to do that is um, is using the git uh, tag command. So um, one can um, um, uh, either um, um, introduce a tag which is lightweight. Uh, that means that uh, that that the reference is basically only uh, only for ourselves. Or we can uh, uh, create an annotated tag, which uh, which is going to um, also add information on the person that has um, uh, added that particular tag, and um, yeah, so uh, the, the, the name of the person and, uh, and the, the, uh, the email if uh, available. So I can uh, add, for example, a tag to um, the latest commit here. Uh, let's call it, um, so I will add the dash A option to make it an annotate tag. And I'm going to name it uh, first recipe. And, um, and then I'm going to add a message. And uh, by default, the, um, the tag is added to the uh, um, uh, commit that uh, the head points to. So in this case, the C1 commit and then just and the way uh, I can uh, view tags is um, git tag list right actually be not sure yes it's going to show all the the tags that I have to define in this case is the recipe but this may not be so helpful uh, even better is actually to show the, well, to look at this particular um, uh, commit, and I can refer to it uh, by uh, the tag now. And then I see that uh, I have, uh, well, this particular commit was actually a merge of the uh, less sold into the uh, um, master branch. So can I ask you, when, when, do you, when do you tag and when do you branch? So when do you prefer the one or the other? So uh, um, tag is, uh, I prefer tag just for particular commits that, uh, that I do want to, uh, uh, re that I want other people to refer to. Let's say, for example, that I am publishing a, uh, a paper and I use a, a particular version, uh, then I would uh, definitely tag uh, that version. If I am, uh, well, for codes that I'm, uh, um, actively working on with other persons, then, uh, then I, uh, I would um, release tags for, for uh, well, periodic uh, uh, tags for, uh, for releases that uh, I am happy with, and not only me, but also my uh, collaborators. Branching, uh, I use the branch when, uh, when I want to try out uh, um, uh, new ideas. And well, actually, almost always I would, uh, um, Create a branch, and then I would uh, quickly actually. Well, as long as soon as I am uh, happy with uh, the changes introduced, I would uh, merge them back or replace them into the main branch. And I think it's um, especially when working with other people, it is good to keep in mind not to have too many open branches at the same time. It's of course helpful for uh, for individual development, but uh, even more important is that you actually share your. Um, your successful uh, implementations with uh, the others. 
There's so, a question from HackMD. What happens mm -hmm. if the resolution or the merge right now made a conflict? Is it so, important for the future? Will, well, how does one recover from this? And does so it we matter? Are actually going to show conflicts in the following. And, uh, and uh, I would uh, only add that uh, the sooner you uh, uh, merge your branches and resolve possible conflicts, the better. Because I mean, uh, otherwise uh, the, we are just going to uh, delay this and more and more. Um, um, I think the main question now is practically speaking, if someone got a conflict, Oh, is the no, next, sorry. Is, yeah, yeah. is the next exercise the thing that will say how to recover if you got yes, a conflict? Yes, exactly. Okay, yes. so, so basically, if you got a conflict now, don't worry. Yes, just uh, just wait a bit. And then actually, Radovan is uh, okay. going to take over now and show how to deal with conflicts. Sorry, am I taking over now, or obviously? So I'm yeah, I think uh, I think it's a good uh, time to to take over. That's uh, more or less what I want to say about branching branches and uh, merging them. All right, and have we gone through the summary? Sorry, I was a bit distracted. Have we? I can also show that. Have we gone through this, or? So no, we have not really. Okay, uh, I can do that if you like. Or mm -hmm. so I will just take the screen. Um, um, because Show I think you could to summarize a little bit. Also, there was feedback that it, the screen share was not narrow enough. Maybe it's better now. Um, so we got a couple of questions on HackMD about... Yes, it looks good, the screen share. Thanks. We got a couple of questions about deleting. Should we delete? Why deleting? I mean, in doubt, in doubt, don't delete. You can always delete later. It's the main motivation why you might want to delete branches is to declutter but it's not a problem they don't take any space if you don't mind having 20 30 branches then don't delete them i think here in the summary i wanted to i wanted to not sure we mentioned this i think i want to mention that that since we do that very often that we want to create a new branch and we switch to it there is a shortcut for it so this is something i use very often you need to check out minus b which will create it and switch me to it in one step. Then I don't have to do it in two steps. And I wanted to summarize by showing these two very typical workflows. One is that I want to work on a new feature, on a new idea, so I create a branch for it. And just because I don't know whether it will work out, I create a new branch, I switch to it, and then I do some work, 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 work. And after a while, I'm happy with this. And then I go back to master and I merge this branch. And then I can delete it or I don't delete it. The other very typical scenario is that I have an idea and I create a branch for it and I do some work. But then I realize after a while, well, this was not a good idea. It didn't work out. I didn't think it through. And then I can just delete that branch. And I keep my working code really organized. So this is another scenario. Um, but again, this should not prevent me from making commits. So if you are new to Git, it's really OK to not create lots of branches. It's OK to start with, with the master branch or the main branch and do commits there. And then over time, over time, you can then <clears throat> start using branches. But why do we then, why do we talk about branches uh, on day one? We talk about them because once we want to collaborate with other people on with Git, we have to use branches. Then there is no other way. So that's why we introduce them today, because on Thursday, we want to write code together. And then we need to understand branches. We, we will have to, there is simply no other way in Git. It always goes through branches. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention that has been somewhere on HackMD. 
somebody asked, can you merge master into something? So it's, it's good to mention that there is nothing special about the name master or about the name main. We, uh, we agree that this is, this is our default branch where we, where we do our work, but there is nothing special about it. There's nothing different about it. You can even, you could even rename master to something. You could even delete it. So from Git's perspective, there is nothing special. Everything works the same way for all of them. And what else? I wrote some more questions down, but maybe we'll come back to them when we summarize. So the plan now, we have 40 minutes left. I will still do one more break. So we will do a break soon. I think before the break, I want to explain what a conflict is. And then we can take a break, come back, I can demonstrate how to deal with it, and we can summarize some of the many questions that came up. All right, let me zoom out and let me go to where we should go, conflict resolution. So what is a conflict? And some of you have already seen a conflict, so some of you were ahead of your time. And now we will see what that really means and how to deal with it. First message is conflicts are a good thing. They sound bad, but they are really good because this is Git preventing us from overwriting our own work or somebody else's work. So they are, they are our friend, not the enemy. And to show you an example how a conflict can arise is that let's start with this recipe here. There are two avocados, there is cilantro, there is salt. And now let's imagine that I modify it on two different branches, branch A and branch B. Or imagine that two, two people modify the file in two different ways. So this is either person A or it's me on a branch A. And what I will do, I'll modify, I reduce cilantro to half a teaspoon, tablespoon. So I modify this line and maybe you can see that this is a little bit highlighted here. But what I also do on top, I add one line. On the other branch, branch B or person B does a different modification. This person really likes cilantro, so increases to two tablespoons, and at the same time adds half an onion. And later, we want to merge these branches. Um, either into each other, or I want to merge branch A into master, branch B into master. And Diana has showed us, showed us how to do that. And now some interesting thing will happen. One interesting thing is that Git will have no problems understanding that we want to have the one line from this modification. And we also want to have the half an onion from that modification. So it will combine these modifications. For Git, it is not a problem that there have been two modifications in the same file. That's not a problem. The problem that Git will have is that uh, it will not know what did we want to keep here. Do I, do I want it to increase the two tablespoons or decrease to half a tablespoon? Here, two people or the same person in two branches has modified the same portion of the code in two different ways. And Git will not simply decide because it will not want to overwrite my work. It will stop here. And it will tell me, wait a moment, there is a conflict. You need to tell me what you want, what you prefer. I can't know. And maybe I will demonstrate that. And then after the break, we can talk about, yeah, let me demonstrate it. And after the, after the break, we will talk about how we can, how we can avoid these situations and generally how, how to organize our projects. So you can type along, or you can watch me create a conflict. And what I need to do, I have not one problem. OK, let, I think it will be good if we do it after the break, because I need to prepare my repository, because I haven't been keeping up to date with the previous exercise. So I recommend that we take a 10 minute break. I prepare my example here and then we come back. I will demonstrate to create a conflict. We will discuss how to deal with it, how to avoid it. 
and I recommend that we are back at three minutes past past the hour. Okay, I'm sharing HackMD, and we will see you later. Bye. And we are back. Welcome back to the stream. During the break, I could catch up and recreate this example that you all have created in the past exercise. Before moving on, I also want to say that we will today not have any more breakout room exercises, so the exercise leads can relax a little bit. I will do the rest as, as a demo, and then you can see me making mistakes and comment. But what we will also do, I think after uh, after half past the hour, we will keep the, the Zoom exercise rooms open. So if you want to pop in back and work on something, discuss, debug, you can. But let me continue here. I have this example with the three branches and I have merged them. I, did, I didn't delete them yet. I might, why not? Git branch, let, let me just remove these merged branches. Git graph, the commits are still there. Okay, this is confusing here. Sorry for that. You don't see that, I should. Well, we will explain what that means tomorrow. But let me now create a conflict. And for this, I will create two branches. In one, I will increase cilantro. And in the other one, I will decrease it. I create both from master. On which branch am I? Git status or git branch. I'm on, I'm still on master. So let, let me go to dislike where I will reduce it. Nano ingredients. And if you like, you can type along and try that as well. So here I will reduce it to 0.5. Save, yes. How was that again? Git add and git commit. And I should do the opposite on the other branch. Git checkout like. And here I'll do something different. Let's have more, more of this. Save, yes. Stage, commit. Well, let's, before I do anything, let's inspect what we have with Git Graph. I have these two new branches. I'm currently on the like one. And what did we know? So the material says that we can now compare branches. I can compare master with like. Yep, that's the difference. And you can compare the other one as well. What, what will be the, what if I compare with the dislike? So when we actually compare by having the reference added, mm -hmm. uh, we compare the tip of the two branches. So the latest commit on the master branch and the latest commit on the dislike one. Mm -hmm. And now I want to merge these things. So I go back to, I go back to master because the merge will always modify my current branch. I want to modify the master branch. And now I will merge them one by one. Actually, it doesn't matter which order I take. The first merge will work. And I start with the like, similar to, just to follow the material here. The first merge will work. It tells me fast forward. If you want to know what that means, there is, a, there is an excursion in the previous episode about explaining what fast forward means. It's not important now for this discussion. 
but the second merge will fail. Let's try. Uh -huh. There's a conflict. It tells me that the automatic merge failed. I should fix the conflicts and then come back and then commit. And then what we, there are many different ways what, that we can do now in the situation. The first thing I will do is git status. Git status will typically show you if there are files which were not conflicting, they will be listed here in green, but it will, it will tell me what are the problem cases. Here there is a problem in ingredients.txt because both modified. What does both refer to? Both branches. They have modified it in the same place in two different ways. What is also nice is that Git already gives me hints on what, what I should do about this thing. I should go into the file and fix conflicts. And does it tell me, yes, here it tells me that with git add, I can inform git that I have resolved a conflict. And one way to resolve a conflict is to do it with the editor directly in the terminal. This is what I will do. So I can open up this conflicting file. And, oops, wrong window. And I will see that Git, Git has modified this file. It has added these markers. It is delimiting the portion that has been modified in two places. So now I know that on, on one branch, this, I, I got this modification. On the dislike cilantro branch, I got this modifications. And now I need to decide. And the way to resolve a conflict now in the editor would be that I decide and I will take the second, second one, the 0 0.5. I'm not such a fan of cilantro, so I will take the second. I need to remove these markers. Also, I need to remove all of this stuff and decide which of the two I want to keep. I kept the second one. As soon as I'm happy, I, again, I save and exit. I have removed these resolution markers, but I still need to inform Git that I resolved this conflict. If I do Git status, Git, still, Git doesn't know that I resolved it. So I need to mark it. Git add the file. I staged this change. Git status again. It already looks familiar. We have a staged change for a commit. And, and I can now use git commit to conclude the merge. Git commit. And only now there is a merge commit, which I can still edit. I can still add more text here if I like. Very often I just leave this as it is. Save exit and we have a new commit. Git graph, the commit that I just got is this one. It's a merge commit with two parents. Since I had a conflict, it stopped halfway. I first had to resolve it, stage and commit. So when you resolve conflicts in your editor, look for these, you know, small, 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 smaller, equal, equal, equal. This will, with this you find, you find the, com the conflict. We will also show you on Thursday uh, that you can resolve conflicts also on GitHub through the web interface. Yet another way to, to deal with conflicts is um, that you can couple, you can use a visual diff, uh, a tool that can show you that visually. So there is something called Git Merge tool which you can couple to programs like OpenDiff or Melt, where I can visually compare one branch on one side, the other branch on the other side, the result in the middle. It will show you the conflicts in red. It will show you the rest in green. 
And this way you can scroll up and down and decide which side you want to keep. Do we also say how to abort if you have a conflict and you don't know what to do and you need to ask a colleague first? There is git merge dash dash abort. So no need to delete everything and start over. You can abort a merge, then talk to somebody else who maybe knows which, which of the two you should keep and you can resolve it together. We have 15 minutes left which we can use now to catch up with some questions. I had like one eye on HackMD, but hopefully Diana can help me. I have written a few questions down that I wanted to talk about just that we wrap up the day. Another thing that we don't want to forget is that we want to ask you for feedback. Oh, so we will later, we will put on the bottom of the HackMD, we will ask you for feedback on how today went. One thing that went really well, but one thing that when didn't go well that we should change, improve, remove, so that we optimize and that we improve for tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about a few things. Um, one thing that I wanted to discuss here with Diana and Richard is we, we got a glimpse of how to deal with a conflict, but how can we avoid it? We can avoid, um, maybe the main message to avoid conflict is to really um, not put too many things into one branch, one branch for one thing only. Don't try to do unrelated, unrelated ideas on the same branch. New branch, new idea. New idea, new branch. Also talk to other people. So if this is a project where we, do, where we collaborate with colleagues and maybe they work on the same file, Maybe they work on the same portion of the file. It's good if we talk about it. So it's good if I inform, inform my colleagues, hey, watch out. I'm, I'm about to modify something really central. Is anybody else also working on this thing? And I plan to work on it for the next five weeks. Just let you know. So this can also avoid um, conflicts. But if they happen, not a problem. These are our friends. They avoid us, that, they avoid that we override work of others. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, communication is very important when you collaborate in a project. And it's good to have uh, some guidelines on how you approach uh, the development of, the, of, uh, of your repository. Do you want uh, to create uh, the several branches, which is uh, usually recommended, and also how often you should uh, uh, you should merge back and maybe you want to when you before you even merge then you just discuss with your colleagues is this a feature that we want to include in our code or not should we keep the merging for later so if yeah. you're unsure it's always good to ask so let's now use the next 10 minutes to clarify a few things that because today there was a lot of lot going on also i appreciate the feedback that for some of you it was too too basic and I understand that because we really want to start, we want to get everybody on the same page, but I can promise you that we will keep climbing that, uh, that learning curve. So there will be new things tomorrow. But one question that came up just because I'm in the context is if I do git merge about what happens then, it will bring me to the situation just before I type git merge. And then I can do the merge again and I will get a conflict again. So th that's, that's what will happen. So if I, after the aborted merge, I want to merge again, I can. It will restore the situation just before I type to git merge. One question that came up on HackMD was, there was a question about auto-completion. And also you might have noticed that my terminal is actually informing me on which branch I am and it has nice auto-completion and I forgot to turn it off. I wanted to turn it off to just have the same experience, but I forgot to keep it on. But it gives me nice information. And I just wanted to point out that where you can get more info about that. So if you like something like this, you can have a look at customizing it. So there are ways to customize your terminal prompt to give you colors and information on which branch you are. So I don't even have to, I don't even have to type git branch. 
and it will give me info on do I have do I have something unstaged, uncommitted? This is not a complete list. So for different shells, there are different solutions. And if you know a nice solution that is not listed here, please add it or suggest it and we will add it. Yes, we also need more text about editors because uh, many editors have extra support for, for Git. So just want you to know that there is more, you can customize it, you can make your life easier. Um, that was that. Back to, maybe I can show the HackMD in view mode. Yes, right and while you do that, so I would add that lots of you actually anticipated uh, uh, the material that we are going to go through tomorrow. So many are curious about undoing things. We can do that in, uh, in different ways. We'll show some of that tomorrow. Undoing, staging. Oh, there were a couple of questions about when, when should I create a new branch? And how many branches should I have? And when should I merge? What can we recommend there? When is a good moment to create a branch and when is a good moment to merge? Whenever you want to add new features, I think it's good to, uh, to create a branch. And then, uh, and uh, so I think if you are unsure, then it's, uh, it's possibly, it's probably a good idea to, to create a branch. Yeah, but also okay to, to start on master or start on main. If you are new to Git, create lots of commits on one branch. If I'm working on my own, in my own project and I'm the only person there, I sometimes just work on one branch. As soon as we start being more people on the project, then, then we start using branches more. I also create a branch when I'm really unsure whether this is really a good idea, then I create one. When do we merge? Uh, I merge as soon as possible. I try to avoid branches that live for five years. Ideally, a branch is something for a few weeks or a few days or one day. I try to merge back as soon as possible, as soon as it's, as soon as I think this was an improvement. Yeah, because by merging you. back earlier, I avoid possible future conflicts. If I create a branch and I forget about it, and then I find it again five years later, the chance is high that there will be in the meantime conflicts. Um, how should we name branches? What is, how do you name branches, Diana? How do you name your branches? Yeah, so I try to keep, uh, I try to have the name uh, related to a particular uh, implementation, maybe I want to add, uh, uh, I don't know, automatic testing, or maybe I want to, uh, to um, I don't know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's good if the branch name is somehow yeah. descriptive. If I'm in a project where we are multiple people, I, what I also like to do, I like to create a branch, I like to give my name to it, how do I have some idea, some experiment. Because then oh, it has two advantages. First of all, I know what's inside. Everybody else knows who this belongs to. And also if there are 30 branches, I can find my branches. So then I can look for which ones start with my name. So that's how, how I like to do things for a project with other people. Descriptive commit messages, descriptive branch names. What else should we talk about? We have five minutes left. Yeah, so um, we'll discuss more about branching uh, and uh, collaborative work uh, on uh, Thursday. Yes, Thursday we will create a recipe book together. We will also, actually on Thursday, we will, we will, what we will try, it will be an experiment that will be fun. We will try to collaborate with live stream participants. So also those of you who are not in an exercise team, 
will be able to collaborate with us on code. Let's see how this works. But I think it will be fun, fun test to try out. So we will really code together in one project on Thursday. Let us give us a little bit of outlook of what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow we we will start with we will start with a little recap and question and answers the first 10 minutes so it's also good this afternoon you can digest some of the new knowledge and if questions come up please write them into the hack and write them bring them with you tomorrow we will start tomorrow with questions and answers what we will do then is now all of the work that we have created all of our hard work today it's all in this folder called .git. And now if I remove this folder or if my computer stops working, then this work will be, will be gone. We will start tomorrow by uh, discussing how can we share now repositories with other people? How can we back it up to GitLab, to GitHub? And then we will dive into an existing repository because very often we don't start from zero we start with something that other people have already created and now we need to learn to navigate in this in, in in the history we will learn some tools on navigating the history finding when things changed or uh, why when precisely we will then talk about undoing recovering git staging area and we will close tomorrow by discussing how much of all of this is really necessary. Where should you start? Where can you go next? What is the next step? Because it's really about, it's a progression. This, this is not something that uh, one can learn in half a day, but it's good to get started. So create comments, create repositories, better too many comments than too few, better ugly messages than no, no comments at all. Five minutes left. Thanks so much for giving us feedback here. Uh, feedback on what was good, feedback on what needs to be improved. This is very important for us. We look at it, we, need, we use it. The things that we can improve already for tomorrow, we will. One suggestion that came in a different chat is that the exercises should really be numbered so that, and they should be easy to refer to by link. So this is something I will try to improve for tomorrow. Diana, Richard, what else should we say? What did I forget? Yeah, well, I don't know. So we are good. I think we had uh, many good questions and uh, we are very grateful you are asking the questions and we are trying to answer them as uh, quickly as possible. Yeah, this is super. Yeah. We are also really happy about the invention that the questions are numbered. That's a new thing. Somebody invented it. It's a very good idea because this way it makes it easy to for us to refer to other questions and answers. You will also see that there are some questions which, which didn't get an answer yet. We will go through them. We will go through all of them. All questions will be answered. We keep this archive uh, hack and D. This is only so that this doesn't grow too long. Also later today, what we will do we will go through all these questions and answers. We will anonymize what needs to be anonymized. And we will publish these questions and answers. And where will you find them? You will find them on the workshop page on the Q&A. So they will end up here later today. I will also send all of you an email with brief summary, brief outlook, the important links, and I really look forward to see you all tomorrow morning. We will keep the, I will keep the Zoom rooms open in case you want to use them. Also, we will be here for a while. We will hang out here. We will then stop the recording and stop this. No, we don't want, you can't. No, we are in a different room, sorry. But we, <laughs> anyway, I also need to get used to this uh, multiple Zoom and multiple live stream setup here. 
So one thing that we can mention is that we will be using GitHub tomorrow. So if you need, still need to set that up, then uh, today is a good time to do that. Yes, GitHub SSH keys. This is something we will need. And where do I find it? If I find it, if I need to find it. It was for sure in some email, but it was also software, software, somewhere. Oh, we don't want here. Requirements. Requirements on. And here we have this page. So tomorrow you really need this. And you need that definitely on Thursday. Should people go through contract conflict resolution again on their own before tomorrow? Will that be I don't think it's, important? I don't think it's important. I think my main thing is that you know that they exist. We know that they are actually useful. If you hit them, you now know a place where to find how to resolve it. It will not be, it will not be essential tomorrow, nor it will be on Thursday. We will see it again on Thursday, but we will not. We will. It's not very, very important. If I, if I had to recap one thing here today, it would be the branching and merging. That will be important. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm happy. So, if yeah. somebody wants to, should we conclude?